Rocky Jones, Space Ranger. Starring Richard Crane. In The Cold Sun, Chapter 2. When we last saw Rocky Jones, he was on the moon Herculon, where Juliandra, the ruler, is anxious for a friendly alliance with the United Worlds. While on Earth, the growing coldness of the sun was of great concern to Professor Mayberry. Your coat, Professor Mayberry. Oh, I'll keep it on for the moment. It feels good. Any news, Professor? The barometer reads no signs of rain. This is good, or we would have a heavy snow. Other parts of the world aren't so fortunate. I was about to project the photo tape of today's news. Oh. Uh, won't you join me? Of course, we know about the weather. I'm anxious to see the reaction of the people. Unabated. A rather happy, philosophical view can be taken of this unusual weather. Petty grievances and international disputes have been forgotten. Nations are shouting cheerfully, How do you like the weather, neighbor? The world over, the situation is being greeted as a welcome holiday. In certain parts of our globe, children and even adults are seeing snow for the first time. <laughs> but personally, I'll be glad to feel the sun again. And how I would like to feel the sun again. <laughs> the people of Earth are wonderful. But how would they act if they knew the snows were possibly forerunners of a glacial age? Dr. Reno, Someplace, Reno? Why, yes, to the city for a few things. But there is an order post. But no one is to leave the area of Space Affairs headquarters. Here, yeah, Mr. Secretary, please. Thank you. But did that include me? I'm a civilian, Mr. Secretary. The order was posted for you more than any other. The true state of the sun is known only to us here and the scientists who have worked with Professor Mayberry. This is top security. Inadvertently, perhaps, you might release the news. Why not? Why not shout it? The sun is going cold. The fools, can't they feel it, see it for themselves? Why let them go on laughing? Tell them, tell them how ice will bury their cities. I prefer to wait and hope until the last possible moment. The tragic hypocrisy of Drake and the Space Rangers. That's the way history will be written in another land, under another sun. Or perhaps you and a chosen few will be there to temper the words. Mr. Secretary. Is that a spaceship, this? Oh, yes, Lena. It's one of our new XY-27s. She sure got plenty of get up and go. Well, tell her to go away. I can't hear myself purr. Just wait till you ride with Rocky and his new spaceship to Silver Moon. Well, that's for me, Bobby. So you call the sun Una. Yes, that means the one thing, the all-important. Many years ago here on Herculon, it was considered a deity. Savages on Earth thought the same thing, Biff. They were called sun worshippers. They made sacrifices to it. Well, of course they were wrong. But they were sure right in knowing how important it was. Biff, hey, Rocky. Bobby, how would you like to go back to Earth? You mean the cold spell there is over? 
Well, I'm not sure. The communications are still jammed. The plan now is to leave on the Silver Moon sooner than intended. I'll beat Biff to saying it. That's for me. <laughs> Please, Rudy, just a word to Rocky or Vina. Just a whisper, Rudy. May I? I wish we could, Juliandra. But Secretary Drake should be the first to know. We'll let Rocky be our messenger with this historically important document. Hmm? Say another word besides document, Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> After blast off and uh, when you regain consciousness, Biff, you'll handle communications until we're out of the Herculon band. Oh, yes, Rocky. Uh, yes, sir. You look real fine sitting there, Biff. Uh, thanks, Vina. Yeah, on you the silver moon looks good. <laughs> Vina, Bobby. Okay, 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 we know. Secure for blast off. <laughs> feel about Rocky Jones getting back to Earth safely. He'll boil inside. But not after Secretary Drake reads a letter from Juliandra. Ah, gentlemen. Come close to the sun. And get warm. Those are fine scale replicas, Professor. Yes, the sun as it used to stand. I have even scaled the degrees of heat and energy. Now we can say that this model represents a temperature of 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit and an internal temperature of 6 million degrees plus so that the Earth received her approximate one, two billionth of this energy. The violent storms on the sun have always caused interference with our wireless communication, but never with our temperature before. But gentlemen, this is the sun of today. Very interesting, Professor, but what you propose to do about it? My observations first led me to believe that there was some surrounding disturbance, more violent than ever before, that was acting as a sort of shroud to the sun's heat. But now I am certain that some sort of reaction has spread over the surface, and hot as this in itself may be, it has solidified to a point where the great internal heat has been contained, like a blanket over a campfire, Mr. Secretary. Again, I say, very interesting. We'll stoke the fire and let the flames burst through and destroy the blanket. And this is where I need your help, Dr. Reno. Look, gentlemen. This is Mercury, the planet nearest the sun. And this is Torida, her newly discovered moon. With the sun cool, I'm sure that space rangers could land, and we must design them to tannic missiles to bombard the sun. Two missiles will start a chain reaction and force the sun to recreate its heat. Here and here. But two missiles would be all that a spaceship could carry. By your own scale, Professor, hitting the sun at that distance would be a thousand to one shot. I contradict. Our missiles will be drawn to their target by the sun's gravitational pull. Right. It's up to your space rangers to get the missiles to Torida. Rocky Jones in the XB-3. This is Rocky Jones in the spaceship Silver Moon calling Space Ranger Band. Can you hear me? Repeat. Can you hear me? This is Rocky Jones. Well, flying without physiograph is bad enough, Biff. 
But now with the astrophone failing, it looks like our hop will have to be in the sound blind. Now we get a slight image bounce on radar, Vex. That gives us one rather weak eye. Where's our first stop, Rocky? There's only one until we reach Earth. Space Station OW9. Perhaps Clark can explain this communication interference. Clark and Space Station OW9, can you hear me? Clark to Space Ranger Service. An outlaw raiding party has landed. I can't hold out. If you can hear me, send help. OW9, repeat. If you can hear me, send help on OW9, repeat. Help on OW9. You squawk like the pirates are just as useless. Oh, shut up. You locked the door against Peter Vatando, silly boy. There's one big mistake to get Peter Vatando angry. Peter Vatando, the brave warrior. Brave when you got two bodyguards. Not so. I don't need them. So, you want to fight with Pinto? Sure. Ah. Ah. Idiots, idiots. <laughs> idiots, idiots. Hold it. We have a job to be done. Instruments first. Load everything of value into the spaceship. This squawk, squawk that built space is Pito's fine friend. Space rangers don't know what happens till it's too late. <laughs> Pito will not kill you with this. One shot to the gyrocentrific control, you're going a fine, bouncy, bouncy ride. Maybe you, your friend Rocky Jones can get here in time to save you, no? Yes? No. Pinto, get in the spaceship. Pinto will be with you in one fast minute. Corrected astronomical reading, Rocky. We should be able to pick up space station OW9. Thank you, Vina. Have a try on radar, Vex Biff. Uh, yes, sir. Mm, it's faint, sir, but there's an object ahead at uh, 270 degrees. Good. Even though we can't communicate, let's hope that Clark can bring us in with the landing magnet. <laughs> The image is now 280 degrees. Did you change course? Why not? The object is bobbing, sir. 290 on the scope. And now 270 again. Rocky, is something wrong with OW9's gyrocentrific? According to the image reading, yes, Fina. Secure, alert Bobby. The gyrocentrific stabilizes the space station. That bobbing can mean only one thing. Stab at the landing berth. Correct side slips. Call up high and low readings. Correct right. Hold. There, Rocky image 270. Correct right, sir. Hold. Dropping from center two six five degrees. Chopper calls, Ben. I'll try to ram at two seventy degrees. Ben, 
Stay at the ready while I go after Clark. I never thought we could do it, Rocky. I'll be right back. Much, Rocky. We better get the silver moon out of the landing ground. The force is destroyed with the space station. Gosh, Clark, you sure must have taken a bouncing around on the space station. Well, believe me, Bobby, I'll never play ping pong again. I know how the ball feels. What have you heard about the communications being jammed? Well, it's not much, Vina. There was a space ranger ship in OW9, but it was in and out fast for refueling on its way. You see, Secretary Drake has his space rangers working in relays. He's trying to keep some kind of communication open between the planets. Sort of like Pony Express riders carrying the mail, huh, Clark? Exactly, Bobby. Now, what we need is a telegraph that'll work. Alert, learn this. We now have image on radar vex, approaching the challenge. Secure for possible action. Pinto or Tondo. Near parallel with the flight of the image, sir. Do you think it's a spaceship, Rocky? Well, I can't be sure. I've chased meteors before when the physiograph wasn't working. <laughs> Pinto Vortado's becoming a very rich man. <laughs> I think Pinto will buy a moon, all of his own. <laughs> Prepare to fire two missiles on a five count, Biff. Explosive set for directly in path of image. Ready? Ready, sir. Fire one. Fire one. Who is it who shoots at Pinto and Tondo? Who is it who shoots at Pinto? Prepare to fire a third missile, Biff. Explosives off, but shock object with direct hit. Ready, sir. Side and board. Yes, sir. Titanic missiles. Now it's the job of your rangers to get them to Torita. We'll need two spaceships. We're holding one now for overhaul. It'll be ready in a day or two. And the other ship? I've decided to wait for Rocky Jones. Rocky Jones? But he's not coming back. <laughs> I, I, I mean, he doesn't know and you can't communicate with him. There isn't time to wait. Without knowing what's going on, Rocky will come back sooner than scheduled. Mayberry and I agree that Rocky is the man to head the lead ship. If waiting causes a delay, 
He will make up for it. Mr. Secretary, the Space Ranger ship is landing. Mr. Secretary, send this ship off to Torita. There isn't time to wait. It's the Silver Moon, Rocky's ship. I've never been so glad to see you. Hello, Mr. Secretary. Professor. I have a rather strange cargo aboard, sir. Bobby, Vina, come on out. Turn aside the platform. Secretary. Hello. Professor. This is Biff, sir. Biff and Cardoso, our exchange visitor. Mr. Secretary. Biff and? Credentials later, sir. All right, come on out. Fast. Go on. Move along. Get going. Prisoners, Mr. Secretary. Our old friend Pinto Bertando and two of his men. They were raiding and destroying space stations. Clark? Mr. Secretary. Oh, it's great to be back on Earth, but it sure is cold. <clears throat> Rocky, destination, Torita. And your mission, the bombardment of the sun. Well, Torita's one place I never expected to go. Hot stuff, Rocky. What about Herculon, Rocky? Has their climate changed? No, not at all, sir. They're under another sun. That's proof that I'm right. Don't you agree, Reno? Oh, yes. Yes, Professor. Uh, how did you leave my protege, Rudy DeMarco, Rocky? No, he was fine, Dr. Reno. Oh, by the way, Juliandra sent this. She asked it to be opened immediately upon my arrival. Dear Mr. Secretary, I am sure you will share my joys and plans for the future. It is better for my people that a suzerain rules instead of a suzerain. And now there will be one. I am relinquishing my rule. Rocky, Juliandra and Rudy DeMarco are going to be married. And he's going to be the suzerain of Herculean, the ruler. finishing repair and structure. And I've got a new name for the Silver Moon. Patches. Uh-oh, the boss. <clears throat> well, how's the barn crew doing? Fine, Rocky. Clark's been kidding. He says now that the new section is welded on, there isn't any of the original Silver Moon left. <laughs> or is he kidding? A factual declaration, Vina. But she wears her battle scars well. Checked and ready with the XB-9, Mr. Secretary. To tank missile security. We find it necessary to remove more equipment and instruments than anticipated. Rocky, Bobby and I will carry on here with the XB-9 if you want to work on your ship. Very good, Professor. Right. The XB-9 will blast off at dawn, taking a head start on your faster ship, the Silver Moon Rocky. You will rendezvous on Torita. We must hope that both spaceships get through to fire their missiles into the sun. Professor Mayberry, Reno and I will sweat it out here on Earth until you get back. Be with us next week, same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger.
corrected astronomical reading, Rocky. We should be able to pick up space station OW9. Thank you, Vina. Have a try on radar, Vex Biff. Uh, yes, sir. Faint, sir, but there's an object ahead at uh, 270 degrees. Good. Even though we can't communicate, let's hope that Clark can bring us in with the landing magnet. Rocky, the image is now 280 degrees. Did you change course? Why not? The object is bobbing, sir. 290 on the scope. And now 270 again. Rocky, is something wrong with OW9's gyrocentrific? According to the image reading, yes, Fina. Secure, alert, Bobby. The gyrocentrific stabilizes the space station. That bobbing can mean only one thing. Stab at the landing berth. Correct side slips. Call out high and low readings. Correct right. Hold. There, Rocky image 270. Correct right, sir. Hold. Dropping from center two six five degrees. Chopper calls, Ben. I'll try to ram at two seventy degrees. Ben, stay at the ready while I go after Clark. I never thought we could do it, Rocky. I'll be right back. Chopper calls, Ben. I'll try to ram at 270 degrees. Ben, stay at the ready while I go after Clark. I never thought we could do it, Rocky. I'll be right back. Rocky. We better get the silver moon out of the landing ground before she's destroyed with the space station. Gosh, Clark, you sure must have taken a bouncing around on the space station. Well, believe me, Bobby, I'll never play ping pong again. I know how the ball feels. What have you heard about the communications being jammed? Well, it's not much, Vina. There was a space ranger ship in OW9, but it was in and out fast for refueling on its way. You see, Secretary Drake has his space rangers working in relays. He's trying to keep some kind of communication open between the planets. Sort of like Pony Express riders carrying the mail, huh, Clark? Exactly, Bobby. Now, what we need is a telegraph that'll work. Alert, learn this. We now have image on radar vex, approaching the challenge. Secure for possible action. Pinto or Tondo. Near parallel with the flight of the image, sir. Do you think it's a spaceship, Rocky? Well, I can't be sure. I've chased meteors before when the physiograph wasn't working. <laughs> Pinto Vortado's becoming a very rich man. 
I think Peter will buy a moon, all of his own. <laughs> Prepare to fire two missiles on a five count, Biff. Explosive set for directly in path of image. Ready? Ready, sir. Fire one. Fire one. Fire third missile, Biff. Explosives off, but shock object with direct hit. Why let them go on laughing? Tell them, tell them how ice will bury their cities. I prefer to wait and hope until the last possible moment. The tragic hypocrisy of Drake and the Space Rangers. That's the way history will be written in another land, under another sun. Or perhaps you and a chosen few will be there to temper the words. Mr. Secretary. Is that a spaceship, Biff? Oh, yes, Nina. It's one of our new XY-27s. She sure got plenty of get up and go. And tell it to go away. I can't hear myself purr. Just wait till you ride with Rocky and his new spaceship to Silver Moon. Well, that's for me, Bobby. So you call the sun Una. Yes, that means the one thing, the all-important. Many years ago here on Herculon, it was considered a deity. Savages on Earth thought the same thing, Biff. They were called sun worshippers. They made sacrifices to it. Well, of course they were wrong. But they were sure right in knowing how important it was. Biff? Hey, Rocky. Bobby, how would you like to go back to Earth? You mean the cold spell there is over? Well, I'm not sure. The communications are still jammed. The plan now is to leave on the Silver Moon sooner than intended. I'll beat Biff to saying it. That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> Just a word to Rocky, or Vina. Just a whisper, Rudy. May I? I wish we could, Juliandra. But Secretary Drake should be the first to know. We'll let Rocky be our messenger with this historically important document. Huh? Say another word besides document, Rudy. <laughs> After blast off and uh, when you regain consciousness, Biff, you'll handle communications until we're out of the Herculon band. Oh, yes, Rocky. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> you look real fine sitting there, Biff. Uh, thanks, Vina. Yeah, on you the silver moon looks good. <laughs> Vina, Bobby. Okay, 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 we know. Secure for blast off. <laughs> Ready while I go after Clark. I never thought we could do it, Rocky. I'll be right back. Clark! Are you all right, Clark? Hi, Rocky. Turn over, turn over. He's on a loading spree. Much of a lead on us? Not much, Rocky. We better get the Silver Moon on the landing ground. The horse is destroyed with the space station. You sure must have taken a bouncing around on the space station. Well, believe me, Bobby, I'll never play ping pong again. I know how the ball feels. What have you heard about the communications being jammed? Well, it's not much, Vina. There was a space ranger ship in OW9, but it was in and out fast for refueling on its way. 
You see, Secretary Drake has his space rangers working in relays. He's trying to keep some kind of communication open between the planets. Sort of like Pony Express riders carrying the mail, huh, Clark? Exactly, Bobby. Now, what we need is a telegraph that'll work. Alert! Learn this. We now have image on radar backs. Approaching the challenge. Secure for possible action. Pinto or Tondo. Near parallel with the flight of the image, sir. Do you think it's a spaceship, Rocky? Well, I can't be sure. I've chased meteors before when the physiograph wasn't working. <laughs> Peter Vortado's becoming a very rich man. <laughs> I think Peter will buy a moon, all of his own. <laughs> Try to fire two missiles on a five count, Biff. Explosives set for directly in path of image. Ready? Ready, sir. Fire one. Fire one. Prepare to fire a third missile, Biff. Explosives off, but shock object with direct hit. Ready, sir. Married. And he's going to be the Suzar of Herculean, the ruler. finishing repair on structure. And I've got a new name for the Silver Moon. Patches. Uh-oh, the boss. <clears throat> well, how's the barn crew doing? Fine, Rocky. The clock's been kidding. He says now that the new section is welded on, there isn't any of the original Silver Moon left. <laughs> or is he kidding? A factual declaration, Vina. But she wears her battle scars well. Checked and ready with the XP-9, Mr. Secretary. To tank missile secured. We find it necessary to remove more equipment and instruments than anticipated. Rocky, Bobby and I will carry on here with the XP-9 if you want to work on your ship. Very good, Professor. Right. The XP-9 will blast off at dawn, taking a head start on your faster ship, the Silver Moon Rocky. You will rendezvous on Torita. We must hope that both spaceships get through to fire their missiles into the sun. Professor Mayberry, Reno and I will sweat it out here on Earth until you get back. Be with us next week, same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger. missiles. Now it's the job of your rangers to get them to Torita. 
We'll need two spaceships. We're holding one now for overhaul. It'll be ready in a day or two. And the other ship? I've decided to wait for Rocky Jones. Rocky Jones? But he's not coming back. <laughs> I, I, I mean, he doesn't know and you can't communicate with him. There isn't time to wait. Without knowing what's going on, Rocky will come back sooner than scheduled. Mayberry and I agree that Rocky is the man to head the lead ship. If waiting causes a delay, he will make up for it. Mr. Secretary, the Space Ranger ship is landing. Mr. Secretary, send this ship off to Torita. There isn't time to wait. It's the Silver Moon. Rocky ship. Rocky, I've never been so glad to see you. Hello, Mr. Secretary. Professor. I have a rather strange cargo aboard, sir. Bobby, Vina, come on out. Kurt, the side of platform. Secretary. Hello. This is Biff, sir. Biff and Cardoza, our exchange visitor. Mr. Secretary. Biff and Credentials later, sir. All right, come on up. Fast. Go on. Move along. Get going. Prisoners, Mr. Secretary. Our old friend Pinto Bortando and two of his men. They were raiding and destroying space stations. Clark. Mr. Secretary. Oh, it's great to be back on Earth, but it sure is cold. <clears throat> Rocky, destination, Torita. And your mission, the bombardment of the sun. Well, Torita's one place I never expected to go. Hot stuff, Rocky. What about Herculon, Rocky? Has their climate changed? No, not at all, sir. They're under another sun. That's proof that I'm right. Don't you agree, Reno? Oh, yes. Yes, Professor. Uh, how did you leave my protege, Rudy DeMarco, Rocky? No, he was fine, Dr. Reno. Oh, by the way, Juliandra sent this. She asked it to be opened immediately upon my arrival. Dear Mr. Secretary, I am sure you will share my joy.